Hi, welcome to Exam Debug. I'm Chris McKenna, and today we're going to be going through the documentation stage of systems analysis. Um, if you haven't watched the other videos, it's probably a good idea to go back and watch them so that you're up to date with where we are now. So, uh, documentation, quite simply, is when we write about our new system. And that way we can tell people what our new system is all about. There are two types of documentation. One is user documentation, which obviously is going to be for the users of the system. So the everyday people that are going to be encountering your system. Maybe in a bank, for example, it's going to be the bank tellers and the managers and other people like this. Our technical documentation is more for programmers, systems analysis, uh, systems analysts, I can't even say the word, and other people of a technical nature who have to understand how the system works underneath the hood. So it's kind of like teaching someone to drive a car and teaching someone to repair a car. That's the kind of difference of level that we're talking about here. Okay, so let's have a look at user documentation. So what sort of things are going to be in our user documentation? Well, if you're not sure on this, think about, you know, when you buy a new phone or you buy a new computer um, or you buy some new software, what sort of things are in the user manual? Because that's the kind of thing that we're talking about at this point. So you might have something telling you the purpose, what's it for, how to do certain things, you know, how to turn it on, turn it off, if you had a new mp3 player, how to change the songs, how to load them on to your mp3 player. Tutorials maybe for if you bought Photoshop, maybe there's going to be some tutorials on how to use this particular kind of software. Uh, you'd have some kind of technical information. So if we jump back, you'll see that there is there's this zone in the middle of our Venn diagram where our documentation is going to cross over a little bit. So you might have things about you know system requirements, um, and you might have some information on how to fix you know little problems that non-technical people can fix, um, and of course you might have something like a frequently asked questions section to help people with common problems. Okay, so let's have a look at our technical documentation. So with the technical documentation, we're also going to be talking about our purpose. So, but maybe we'll have a more of a technical perspective on it. And that will go for any of the elements where there's a crossover. Um, this one is obviously going to be focused on the perspective of the user, and this one on the perspective of the technician, whoever that technician may be. So, other things we might have would be the language used. So, probably this is more likely to be the programming language. Although it is possible that you would talk about the languages you support, French, German, Spanish, etc. However, this is more likely to be what language have you used or which languages have you used at different parts of your program. Have you used Java, C, Python, all of these other things, and why? Um, likewise, we'll be talking about what happened in our design section. So we might talk about our validation rules and verification. Uh, what validation rules do we have in our system? Why? Where are they? Things like this. Uh, bugs. So bugs are problems, errors. Um, and this comes from when we used to have big room-sized computers and literally insects, bugs as we call them, would crawl into the machines causing them sometimes to break. So bugs are problems in the system. Um, it would be nice to think that systems that were put out and software that's put out was all error free but uh, having worked in software before I can tell you there's a lot of bugs usually in uh, things when they come out um, and they're usually minor, they're usually small and you're not going to encounter uh, any of them or some of them in your ever using the software but a lot of the time there are problems still there that they haven't been able to fix or which cost too much money or which cost too much time or they'd have to go back and rewrite whole sections to be able to fix it. Uh, also be talking about requirements, again more with a technical perspective, but that's sort of a crossover again. 
error messages. So I'm sure everyone's familiar with 404. Uh, we know what that means because we see it all the time. Page not found. Um, however, you know, what do the error messages in your system mean? Uh, especially if it's code based, you know, you're just giving out numbers. Uh, you know, the system crashed because of that 269 error. Okay, then we have to know what that means. And so that would be in the documentation. And we could also include information about our different variables, our inputs and outputs for this system. So for those of you that have been following along, we've been dealing with Mr. Awesome and his gym in each lesson. So maybe in terms of documentation, we're going to have um, a set of instructions on how to use the new customer database um, that we've made for his new system. So he used to have a paper system. We've upgraded them to a database. Uh, the trainers are going to have iPads with training programs on them. And so this will be information on how they can access that and how to deal with any common problems that he or his staff might have. On the technical documentation side, though, we're going to be talking about you know how the database is constructed, what uh, tables have we used and why, what fields do we have, what are the validation rules for entering data into those fields, and various things like that. So we're looking at the inside, the nuts and bolts of the system in the technical documentation. So in your system, again, if you've been following along, what would be the user and technical documentation in your system? Can you try and be a little bit specific and add them on to the document you've been creating? Okay, so that's a nice quick one for today on documentation. So all you have to know is user documentation, technical documentation, what's the difference, and some examples of what things might be in each. Next class is going to be another quick one, and we're going to be talking about evaluation to finish off. Um, so please follow on the playlist. Um, you can subscribe to us and yeah, keep up to date with any new videos that are coming out, uh, or go and visit our website, examdebug.com. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments below, and we'll try and get back to you. Thank you very much, and good luck with your exams. Yeah. <laughs>